this is Debbie from Lime Doodle Design and thank you for joining me for Doodling with Debbie. Today I'll be taking you on a little journey from sketch to finished card with a sweet watercoloured clean and simple Christmas card. For this card I'll be using the Christmas Kitty set from Science Stamp. I know there are a lot of cat owners out there and even if you don't own a cat, who can resist kitties dressed up in hats, scarves and jumpers or sitting in a box? I think there's a lot of flexibility with this set. The two top kitties could easily be dressed up warm for an autumn or winter day and the cat in the box could be used at any time of year. There are also matching dies for this set too. Here's a notebook I keep beside me at all times. I write down my daily appointments and to-dos in a bullet journal style. This little sketch here is messy, scribbled down quickly when the idea came to me. My idea was for the sleeping kitty in the set and I thought about having a wide border around a watercoloured simple scene. I thought the cat could sit on a crescent moon, under a tree, on a branch or nestled in a wreath. So many options to where the little guy could have a rest. From this scribbled sketch I created a draft of the card I wanted to make, planning out on a piece of computer paper cut to A2 size where I wanted everything to go. I then took a piece of Fabriano Artistico Extra White Cold Press Watercolour Card from a block by running a palette knife around the edge to release the card from the gummed edges. I then used a ruler and pencil to map out the wide border I wanted for this card. You'll see that eventually I had to make adjustments to this, but that's fine, a plan doesn't have to be inflexible. I then paired the watercolour card with my plan and placed them together in a mini misty. I've seen Christina Werner do this and it's a great way to transfer your plans to your card accurately. I lined up the cat where I planned for it to be on my sketch and then lifted the sketch paper and stamped the cat in antique linen distress ink. Off camera I then held my sketch and card together against a light and marked where I wanted the top and the bottom of the crescent moon to be. It had taken a few attempts to get where I wanted the moon to be and so to save time repeating that process it was helpful to transfer these markers. To map out the moon I used a nested circle die from Samsa Stamp as a guide. I taped the card to a board to prevent warping while painting using 3M painter's tape. I line the tape just slightly over the pencil line so that the tape protects the line and I'll be able to erase it afterwards. I continued taping the edges so that the whole of the border was covered and protected from any splashes of paint. I wanted a nice crisp border to the central focal point. Please excuse the lighting for this video. I painted this when it was dark outside. The days are shortening so quickly now and I need to work out if I'm going to film more videos how to do this when I don't have much natural light to work with during the winter. I've started painting and I'm using Daniel Smith paints. For the cat's hat, although it's striped, I started with a base layer over the whole of the hat in a light pink. My plan is to use pink and red stripes for the hat, so the pink base will still work for the red stripes as well as the pink ones. I'm working on a quite a small area and so I'm using a size 2 round brush. I'll be dotting around the image, painting different areas at different times, and that is so that I don't paint one area when its neighbour is still wet, otherwise the paint will merge together. I used my favourite wet and wet technique a lot on this card, painting an area with paint or clean clear water and then dropping in deeper colour. The paint slowly merges leaving beautiful natural blends of colour. The key is to leave the water to do its work and not to mess with it too much, which for me is easier said than done as my style seems to be slow but steady, adding layers of colour until I get in deep enough shadows against highlight areas so that the cat comes to life. I have the Christmas Kitty stamp set to my side so that I can reference it as I go along. The whole reason that I stamp in antique linen distress ink is that it merges with the paint to give a lovely no line watercolour effect. However, very quickly the lines do disappear and so having the set to, set to my side to reference can help me make sure I know where I need to paint. One thing I've learned is that I'm not good at putting in facial features if my guidelines are too indistinct or gone all together. And so before I went too far, I used a black micron pen in size 05 to draw in the cat's eyes, whiskers, and nose. When dry, this pen is waterproof, 
so I can continue to add layers of colour over the top without worrying about the ink smudging. These micron pens are fabulous and you can buy them in a pack which have different sized tips. Carrying on with the painting now and I'm adding the deeper colours starting with the stripes to the hat. These deeper shades make all the difference and quickly start to bring the cat to life. It's always a good idea to leave highlight areas to contrast against the shadow areas too though. I made sure to keep part of the cat's face lighter and also thought the light would hit around the back of the leg and also on his part of his back. I did contemplate giving the highlights a yellow glow from the moon. However, the cat is quite petite and I didn't want to lose him into the moon too much. I debated a silvery moon, but seeing as I painted the cat in shades of grey already, then I thought a warm yellow moon would contrast nicely. I carefully followed my pencil lines for the outline of the moon and filled in the area with water before dropping in more concentrated colour. I'm using one of my all-time favourite colours here, Cronacodone Gold. It is a warm, muted, deep mustard colour if used full strength, but dilutes out to the lightest of warm yellows. For the sky, I'm using a mix of indigo and endanthrin blue. I mixed the colour on my palette, washed out my brush and then painted the sky with the faintly tinted blue water. This way I get a good layer of water down but I could still see where I painted. I then brought in the more concentrated mix of blue and let the colour burst out through the water layer. I carefully painted around the edge of the moon before drying and as you can see the colours when dry knock back a lot drying paler and more muted than when wet. To remedy this, I added an extra, more concentrated layer of cronacridone gold to the moon, and then for the sky, I brought in a layer of ultramarine blue. The joy of watercolours is that they layer over each other, and because of their translucency, you can still see the layer below. I wanted to make sure the bottom of the panel was deep in colour, as I planned to white heat emboss the sentiment over this area, and so I wanted to make sure there would be enough contrast against the white. When dry, I carefully pulled back painter's tape, and this is where my plan hit a bump in the road. I'd wanted a crisp edge to the painted area, and my tape let me down on this occasion, and I had some slight bleeding of the paint under the tape. I can't have pressed the tape down firmly enough at the beginning. I'll come back to this in a moment. Moving on to the sentiment and I lined up the greeting from the Christmas Kitty set and then treated the card with anti-static powder. I wore out my powder tool but I still had powder in it so I transferred it to a little jar and used an old paintbrush to add it where I need it. I'm always conscious to use up my supplies fully like this and get the most out of them. I stamped the greeting in Versmark ink and did so three times to make sure I had a good impression on the watercolour card. I then sprinkled with white embossing powder before using a heat tool to melt the powder. I used a cloth to clean up any remaining anti-static powder and then that line between the paint and the border was bothering me. I debated leaving it but in the end I decided the best course of action to get the clean line I was after was to trim the piece out and then add to another piece of watercolour card with foam tape. I used a Faber-Castell polychromo coloured pencil to deepen a few shadows and then prepared white gouache for the stars. I usually splatter white gouache for an organic look but I wanted to protect the cat and moon from getting covered. I debated whether to mask the images and splatter anyway and you could do that but in the end I opted to use a paintbrush and randomly dot the white gouache onto the sky. I added adhesive to the back of the panel and then added this piece to an A2 card base cut and scored from Ivory Card. So that completes the simple watercoloured Christmas scene from sketch to finish card. On the Samso Stamp blog you'll find a coordinating blog post as well as the details of the supplies I've used today. If you want to find me, I blog over at limedigidesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time.